let's discuss about n slash log module. We will see how to make use of this n slash log module in our suite script. And also we will see script execution logs made by this APIs available in n slash log. So we have around four different types of log APIs, which are like log.debug, log.audit, and log.error. And finally we have log.emergency. We will see how to make use of all these different log APIs in our script. So here I have opened my Visual Studio code and I have created a basic schedule script with version 2.1. And if you clearly notice, I am not even loaded a log module, but I have loaded a record module, but I'm not even going to make use of this record module. Also notice I have used all the APIs related to log, like starting from log.audit, log.debug, log.error and log.emergency. So if you see this log.audit, we have two properties starting from title and details. Title, you can provide some meaningful title and in details, you can provide some more meaningful details about the logs. So why we have to make use of this log? So let's say you have some complex logic and you want to know what is happening in each and every variable. So if you just clearly notice on this for loop, so I'm just logging this I variable so just to see what is the value I'm getting on this I variable. And after looping three times, I have a variable here, which is test, which is not even defined here. So this will be throwing an error. When it throws an error, it will go to catch section. And I'm trying to log using the log.error API and log.emergency API. And before that, when it completes the code, I'm trying to log using a log.audit API saying script completed. And if you just notice the difference between this log.audit and log.error API, here I have made use of this JSON representation to present my title property and details property. On the other hand, I just used a shortcut without even providing a JSON. I have just provided two strings separated by a comma variable and where Netsuite will understand that this is a title and this is a details. So as I said before, I have not loaded this log module here, which means this log module is like kind of a global module where you can use this across all different scripts without even loading. Now I'm going to upload this code to my Netsuite account by pressing Alt Shift U. Now my file has been uploaded successfully to my Netsuite account. I'll be creating a script record for this schedule script and a script deployment for the schedule script. In order to know how I'm going to create the script record and script deployment for the schedule script, you can check out the previous videos on schedule script. So in my Netsuite account, I have created a script record for this schedule script. I have provided a name as execution logs and this is a file which I have named in my Visual Studio code. And also I have created two different deployments, one with execution logs test, another with execution logs two. So these are the two deployments. So before we go ahead and execute this schedule script, let's try to understand what are this log.debug and log.audit APIs when we can make use of this different APIs. So these are the different log level APIs which I mentioned before. So the log level debug is usually used by developers when they start developing their code and they will log most of the variables whichever they wanted to see for the testing purpose. And the next level log level which we have here is audit. And this audit log level is usually used when you want to log some specific variables and you want to keep a high on that specific variable. You can make use of this log.audit. Log.error, you usually know like we use this in try catch blocks and we use this in catch block specially to log the errors like unexpected or something like that and emergency log level it's like as they mentioned like used to log some most critical areas and you want to keep a high on that so let's go to our script deployment of our schedule script and we will see how to make use of this log levels in our script deployment also so from this script deployment i'm going to open the script deployment called execution log test i'm going to click edit on the script deployment and when I click edit on the script deployment on the right hand side, you can see there is a log level which shows different log levels starting from debug, audit, error, emergency. As of now, this has been set or defaulted to emergency. So I'm just going to click cancel and go back to my script record and click on this deployments to open another deployment which has been set with debug. So I'm going to open this execution logs too. I'm going to edit this execution logs too. And if you just notice this log level again, I'm going to leave it as debug itself now. And I'm gonna save and execute this script deployment where the log level has been set to debug. So let's execute this script. So I'm gonna click refresh on the script status. Now we can see it says script has been completed. So let's open the script deployment. And in order to see the execution logs, I'm gonna click on this execution logs. And you can see this as executed our script and it started with 
and log.audit which is script started and followed by three log.debugs which is like our loop like three times we try to loop and log the in variable called i which is 0 1 and 2 and we have placed a variable in our code called as test which we are not even defined and that is the reason it shows an error as test is not defined and using a log.error api and also we have placed the same error message on log.emergency so let's go back to our code so this is how our code look as i showed you before log.audit and log.debug inside our for loop and we have a variable which is not even defined and this has been errored out so it came to catch block and it logged the error and log.emergency and if you clearly notice you won't see this log.audit here that's because it faced the error here and directly came back to our catch block to log all this log.error and log.emergency now let's do one thing let's see what happens if i change the log level from debug to audit so i'm going to change the log level from debug to audit i'm going to click save and execute so i'm going to click refresh to now i can see that the script has completed the execution so i'm going to click on this deployment i'm going to click on the execution log now if you clearly notice script has started with audit and i can just see error and emergency i don't see any log levels with debug right i don't see any debug logs in this script execution logs so this is because we just set the log level as audit so it has ignored the debug and it has considered the only debug error and emergency so why this has happened so netshoot has done some kind of settings on the back end so what happens when you set it to log level the audit is it is going to ignore the debug and it's going to consider only audit error and emergency so in the same way when you set the log level as debug it's going to consider all the apis starting from log.debug audit error and emergency but when you set the log level as audit it's going to consider only log.audit log.error log.emergency and let's say you are setting the log level as emergency it's going to consider only the APIs used which are like log.emergency and it's going to ignore other APIs like log.error log.audit and log.debug the same goes for log.error it considers only log.error API and log.emergency and it ignores log.audit and log.debug so now let's do one thing so i'm going to go back to my script i'm going to click on execution logs so this is going to show all the logs which was available from my both the deployments so i had two different deployments it's going to show both the deployments logs here so it's going to be a huge logs in the script record now if i just open that specific deployment let's say i'm going to open this deployment one and deployment two now if i just select the deployment two and i click on the execution logs you can just see only logs related to this particular script deployment this is like hardly around nine logs but on the other side this is going to be a huge one uh, which is very related to this particular script deployment like more than 10 lakhs but when i open this a common script record and if i click on this execution log it's going to show all different execution logs available on this script record and all different deployments of this script record so now let's go back to our script deployment 2 where i just have only nine logs so if i remove all it's going to remove all the logs and if you clearly notice we have a customized view option here so if i just click customize view so if i just click on the criteria so whatever the logs which have been on the execution log of the script deployment it was just showing for today's logs it will not show the previous yesterday's log or the previous logs so it's just going to show only today's log if you want to see a different logs what i would suggest is you can modify this date criteria and you can set this uh, criteria like kind of let's say you want to see logs on or before today right so you're gonna set it and you're gonna save it and you can also name it like kind of today's and previous uh, history something like that and you're gonna get the data here so in the same way you can create multiple views and you can filter it based on the views let's say you want to filter it based on two weeks you can add the criteria and filter it based on that and if you want to add additional columns you should be able to add that and get it over here so also additionally if you want to filter any logs and see the logs only specific related to audit you can select the audit and it's going to show you logs related to audit only the same way when you choose debug it's going to show you only logs related to audit debug now what if i remove all these logs like let's say i'm going to remove all the logs which are available here now it has been completely removed can i just find these logs again yeah you can find these logs in order to find your logs for the script 
you just need to navigate to customization scripting and click on the script execution logs so once you go to the script execution logs it will show you all the logs available from all different scripts on your account not only the specific script so if you just select the script you can filter it by different scripts and you can see all the logs currently it has been set to all logs it will show you all the logs from all different scripts here even wide range of filter options like log level you can filter it by log level debug or it the same way where you did it on the deployment and even you can filter it by date range and in this page it will show you around last 30 days of logs and you can just see only 10,000 entries on this page so if you want to export it in excel or csv you can export it so on the other side i also tried to update this for loop like kind of more than 10 lakhs to loop and log this log.debug api and i started executing the in my netshot account when i executed the deployment with that 10 lakh logs so it started around 4 37 am and it ended around 4 57 am which you can see like around almost it took 20 minutes to log all this APIs, which means like kind of huge time, right? So what if you have all this different kind of log.debugs in a user event script or client script and multiple logs being used. So it's going to take huge time and it's going to affect the performance of your script and also the record which you're going to deploy the script. So make sure either to remove unwanted log.debugs in your code, make sure to set the log level on your deployment to audit and when you push the script deployment to your production account, Make sure to set the log level as error so that it will not log the unnecessary logs which you have used in your code and will just log the logs which are like kind of errors and emergencies. I hope you guys would have understood this instance log module and the script execution log speech and you would have understood how to use this log.debug audit error and emergency APIs. And just remember the logs which you see on the script execution logs. So it will just show you the last 30 days logs on your script execution log page.